You need not live in the heartland to strut your stuff like an icon of the West. The markets have shown this is no flyover stock. But in the raucous retail rodeo, are investors ready to give Boot Barn a big old booyah? Some stocks just don't know when to quit. Look at Boot Barn, the lifestyle retailer that sells Western and work-related footwear, apparel, and accessories. This stock's been a Kramer fave for ages. Do you know it's up already nearly 150% for the year? The source of its strength, Boot Barn keeps putting up incredible numbers. When the company reported at the end of October, it delivered yet another top and bottom line beat with spectacular 7.8% same-store sales growth. You know, these retailers aren't doing those kinds of numbers anymore. So can the stock keep climbing as we head into 2020? Let's take a closer look with Jim Conroy, the president and CEO of Boot Barn, to get a better read on how his company's doing and where it is headed. Mr. Conroy, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank Good to see you. Good to see you. Well, I have to tell you, you changed my life. I drafted Zeke in the first round of so fantasy. Nice. And you know what I put on? Your hat. And I'm thinking that people are wearing your hats in all different places, so different from when you started even just, you know, a dec- less than a decade ago. Yes, they are. But m- most of our product is still a functional use. Uh, right. We have seen a nice pickup in more of the fashionable side of hats, particularly on the ladies' side. So floppy, more fashionable hats on the ladies' side. Um, but if you were to walk around most of our markets, men and women are wearing the hats for sun protection and for a, a functional purpose. Well, I think that's really important because there was a time this afternoon the Baker Hughes rig count came out and it showed uh, <laughs> fell by five, six consecutive declines. And there was a time when I was worried about the oil and gas business and your company. It's not like that anymore. No, that's right. I think we've diversified quite a bit more. And I think we finally have broken that connection, at least in the investor's mind, to recount the price of oil, et cetera. Uh, We're now in 33 states, almost 250 stores. So the connection and connectivity to the price of a barrel of oil, I think, is now behind us. Finally. Well, let's talk about what is driving. I mean, uh, uh, country music and NASCAR, uh, just a massive market uh, that Wall Street guys seem to underappreciate. Perhaps. I think we've said in the past that this is a massive retail opportunity yes. that's been hidden in plain sight for years. It's hard to understand when you're in Manhattan or when you're in Los Angeles. But when you fly across the country and you look down, you're looking at our customer. Um, when you in answer your question, what's driving the growth? We probably have some tailwinds here or there, but we've been on average plus eight for 10 years. So it's not a new phenomenon. I think people are now just noticing us as we've crossed a billion dollars in market cap and, and are now more center stage on, uh, in, in Wall Street. Well, I suppose you put it that way because some people would say, well, you missed it with 150 percent. But we both know that there are great retailers that can do that year after year after year until people really do discover them everywhere. And one of the things I think that makes it so that I, I have such confidence in you is that I think, you're, I think you have Amazon insulation. Well, Amazon is a great competitor, a very formidable company, of course. But well, we have insulation from online mostly, right? So it's a store-preferred purchase. Right. Uh, more than 80% of our business is in the store. We really focus on driving store traffic. Uh, the fit of the boot or the, the same-day need of a work right. boot. You know, a guy on a, on a job site needs this boot t- to get back to work that right. day. So he's, uh, he can't wait for it to be shipped to him typically. Um, but so far, you know, Amazon carries many of the products that we carry, um, and, but they've done that for years, right. and we continue to see growth in both channels. So we're very pleased with that. Now, your uh, private label's loved. I mean, most people have private label, and we think, okay, well, let me get the real. It seems like your private label is the real. It is. It is. Our exclusive brands or our private label are, are set in terms of good, better, best to be better priced, they're the best boot in the market at that price. They're not promoted every day like a lot of other mm-hmm. store brands might be. So we've set them out from the, from the beginning to be true brands. And we have customers coming in, buying, looking for that product as if they're a brand, as if they're a third-party right. brand. Um, so you know, between Cheyenne, Cody James, and a lot of the others, they've seen some nice growth. It's now about 25% of our in-store purchases are exclusive brands. Now, the margins of that must be good, even though I know you do have some China exposure, but it seems very minimal when you look at the numbers. We've been able to offset any of the issues with tariffs. You mitigate uh, it. That's what I've been saying, that you're in the mitigation business, right? Yes, yes. and, and the, the, we've had some really nice, sharp growth in exclusive brands recently, and that has offset some of the pressure of tariffs. And uh, when we had our last earnings, well, we raised our guidance for right. the year. So, And we're in a, we're in a tariff environment now, and... 
we've been able to find ways to uh, either push back from a negotiating standpoint or increase prices if need be. A lot of the great retailers, Jim, what happens is people say, I, I, uh, there's really that much room for expansion. Given the popularity of these kinds of, of items, isn't it possible you could double your store count? Absolutely. And, and we've mapped it out. We've mapped out the whole country state by state. Uh, and we've gotten to a number of exactly 200, 250 doubling to uh, 500. So we think we can double the store count. Uh, soon to be in Pennsylvania. So we'll be get, getting closer and closer to, uh, to New York, and, and hopefully we'll have investors going. See, I am convinced that it'll fly in New York because I, I have a house in uh, San Miguel de Allende in Mexico. And, you know, a lot of expats, to 90 percent expats. And they, they oh, this is what they wear, okay? And, it's, and a lot of the people in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and because it's fashion. Um, it's, it, it, it's regarded as fashion from the point of view of uh, dress-up. It, it's, it's a dress-up. It is. Part of it is. Uh, so, you know, but, but what pays the bills really is a, a boot that is, this is a Western boot, but it's worn every day. It's got a rubber sole bottom and it's a functional purpose. Now, from a fashion perspective, we do have some brands and some styles that, you know, this is a, a boot that we brought out under the Idlewind by Miranda Lambert line. And this is a fashion boot, right? right. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we're excited about the, the launch of Idlewind and its growth. Uh, and it's been a really nice contributor to our overall sales growth. But the most of our product is commodity, replenishment, staples. Uh, our customer doesn't go in looking for Western wear. They right. go in looking for clothing. Well, I got to tell you, you've done a remarkable job. Each time you come on, I tell people you can still buy it. And you can still buy it. Uh, and I just think that tariffs doesn't matter. I mean, the, the, the price is right. And you've, you've been so. very successful. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Well, Jim, I got to tell you, it's been a, it's always a pleasure to see you. Like and it. I cannot believe I wore a cowboy hat for the Dallas Cowboys. You made me into someone I never thought I'd be. That's Jim Conroy. He's the president and CEO of Food Barn. This one's not done. That money's back after the break. Take control of your financial future with the new madmoney.cnbc.com. Kramer's exclusive CEO interviews, full episodes, analysis, even your own soundboard. Plus special access to Mad Money 101 with rules and techniques to break down the market for all investors. The red flag that makes me drop a stock immediately is... It's everything you need right when you need it. The new madmoney.cnbc.com. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.